What's happening around the world? And what's happening here at home? A very good evening. You're watching Primetime News coming to you live and direct from the News Fast Studios here in Colombo. Bringing you the news, I'm Mariam Ganavijaya. And I'm Sandro Ferdinando. Let's take a look at your headlines for tonight. Sri Lankans ready to welcome the Singhala and Tamil New Year. New Year to dawn at 9.05 p.m. tomorrow. SJB ready for any debate. Nalin Bandara responds to the NPP. Eighty tons of vegetables in Dambulla thrown away within two days. Vietnamese billionaire sentenced to death over fraud case. Historic agreement inked between the International Cricket Council and MTV Channel Private Limited. Everyone is eager to welcome the Singhala and Tamil New Year tomorrow, a tradition steeped in ancient customs. Along with the excitement of the New Year, Sri Lankan cricket fans have another reason to celebrate today. A historic agreement between the International Cricket Council and MTV Channel Private Limited has been inked. MTV Channel Private Limited has secured the ICC cricket rights in Sri Lanka up until the end of 2025. According to the historic agreement announced today, MTV Channel Private Limited will exploit the broadcast rights of all International Cricket Council matches worldwide for the next two years via TV1, Shakti TV and Sirisa TV. The digital rights will be exploited via www.sirisatv.lk and by icc.tv, enabling more fans to watch ICC world events over the next two years. The MTV network covers a large proportion of the Sri Lankan population with channels covering the three main languages in the country and a dedicated sports channel carrying live broadcasting of all major sporting events. The events covered in the deal are the ICC Men's T20 World Cup 2024, ICC Women's T20 World Cup 2024, ICC Under-19 Women's T20 World Cup 2025, ICC Men's Champions Trophy 2025, ICC World Test Championship Final 2025 and the ICC Women's Cricket World Cup 2025. This exciting news comes on the heels of MTV's successful live broadcast of the last Cricket World Cup for Sri Lankan audiences. Going beyond just broadcasting the games, MTV promises to take Sri Lankan cricket viewing to the next level. By leveraging new technologies, MTV plans to bring expert analysis directly to viewers, enriching their overall cricket experience. This commitment ensures Sri Lankan fans won't miss a single moment of the action, along with insightful commentary from cricket experts. ICC Chief Executive Jeff Allardyce said, quote, We are delighted to be partnering with MTV, which is an exciting addition to our suite of broadcast partners. Sri Lanka has such a rich history of cricket and this partnership is a fantastic opportunity to create more fans who can enjoy the sport." Unquote. Shivan Daniel, Group Director of the Capital Maharaja Group, which owns and operates MTV Channel Private Limited, said, quote, We are delighted that MTV has successfully secured the exclusive broadcasting rights for world cricket in Sri Lanka for the next two years especially considering CMG's close association with cricket in Sri Lanka since over many decades." Unquote. He added, quote, This exciting development marks a significant stride in our commitment to delivering premium sports content to our viewers. Cricket holds a special place in the hearts of Sri Lankans and we are thrilled to bring the exhilarating action of world cricket to screens across the nation and we aim to elevate the cricket viewing experience for fans." Unquote. News first with the people. As we mentioned before, tomorrow marks the joyous celebration of the Singhala and Tamil New Year, a vibrant festival rich in tradition and a family bonding. 
Sri Lankans traditionally clean their homes and prepare New Year's sweets before the auspicious time of Punya Kale. The Singhala and Tamil New Year will dawn at 9.05 p.m. tomorrow. Many towns were bustling today with people preparing for the New Year celebrations. People were seen buying sweets, clothes and other necessities. Business man, the Colombo Fort bus stand was packed today as people headed home to celebrate the new year. Authorities deployed additional buses from the Colombo Fort bus station to ease passenger congestion. The Sri Lanka Transport Board announced it will deploy additional buses for tomorrow and Sunday, similar to the past few days. Meanwhile, commuters at the Colombo Fort railway station were inconvenienced this morning due to a train shortage. The Department of Railways has cancelled some of his train journeys tomorrow and on Sunday. However, intercity train services will operate normally during this period. Additionally, the department has scheduled six special train journeys. Meanwhile, a large crowd was seen at the central bus stand in Peta last night. Due to insufficient buses, police intervened and brought in nine additional vehicles for the commuters. Speaking at a media briefing today, police spokesperson D.I.J. Nihal Thaldu has said that special security and traffic measures are in place island-wide during the festive season. We urge the public to avoid driving under the influence of alcohol. We've observed a concerning rise in traffic violations such as speeding. We kindly ask motorists to pay close attention to traffic guidelines for everyone's safety. The police also urged the public to be cautious of water-related accidents during the festive season. In 2023, over 600 water-related accidents were reported near beaches, rivers and other water bodies. To ensure a safe and enjoyable experience, avoid alcohol consumption near water bodies. Supervise children and elderly people closely. Obey all warnings against swimming in certain areas. Listen to advice from locals about water depth and safety. Locals are often aware about the specific water bodies, including hidden dangers in areas unsuitable for swimming. By heeding their advice, you can significantly reduce the risk of an accident. Following these simple safety precautions can help you avoid such accidents and ensure a happy and healthy travel experience. <laughs> The Singhala and Tamil New Year will dawn at 9.05 p.m. tomorrow. The auspicious time of Punya Kale will commence at 2.41 p.m. tomorrow and will end at 3.29 a.m. on Sunday. The auspicious time to prepare meals is at 11.06 p.m. tomorrow. 
Astrologists say that it is wise to let go of all work before 2.41 p.m. and give priority to religious observances. Astrologists say that it is wise to light the hearth, clad in blue-colored clothes while facing the direction of south, and to prepare milk rice mixed with jaggery and sweet meats with sesame seeds. Commencing work, exchanging of gifts and partaking in meals is fixed for Sunday at 12.06 a.m. and should be done so clad in blue-colored clothes and facing the direction of south. The time for anointing oil is fixed for Monday at 10.17 a.m. and should be done so clad in white while facing the direction of south. Leaving for work is fixed for Wednesday at 6.52 a.m. and should be done so clad in green-colored clothes while facing the north when leaving the house. Singhala and Tamil New Year 2024 Wins the debate Samagi Janabalavege MP Nalin Bandara said that the SJB is ready for any form of debate with the National People's Power. However, there is still no finality on what kind of debate will be held between the parties and who will participate in this debate. Former MP Nalinda Jayathissa, who has been appointed by the National People's Power to coordinate the debate, issued a statement recently and said that the debate between the leaders should be held first. Nalinda Jayathissa added that if the SJB is not willing to officially participate in this debate, then a debate could be held between the Economic Council of the SJB and a similar body of the NPP. This was the response of parliamentarian Nalin Bandara, who is coordinating the debate for the Samagijana Balavege. We are ready for both of these debates. Sajid Premadasa has himself said that he is ready for the debate. But we did not see Andhra Kumar Disanayaka saying that he is ready for the debate. I don't know if the people of this country saw him saying that. Therefore, there's no reason to hide. Let's fix dates for both debates at once and hold both debates. The National People's Power is clearly trying to use this debate between the economic councils and trying to shy away from both of these debates. That is why they are quoting a part of what they said 15 months ago and are attempting to say that they were the ones who challenged us first. Nothing like that happened. We can clearly see that they are trying to shy away from this debate. But we will not shy away from this debate. Sajid Premadasa will also not allow them to shy away from this. The NPP should then send us a notice in writing saying that they are scared of the debate between the economic councils and that they do not want to hold the debate. Or they should tell us that they do not have something similar to our economic council. Or if they say that they have no one else but Andhra Kumar Desanayaka to speak for any event, that would be all right. Since Sajid Premadasa has already accepted the challenge, he will go ahead with the debate. They are trying to use one of these debates and shy away from both of the debates. We are not afraid of either one of these debates. We know that the National People's Power will split if that debate is held. We will set dates for both debates at once. I hope on meeting my colleague and friend Nalinda Jayathissa after the festive season and discuss these matters. Nalinda Jayathissa, Wins the debate. Former Member of Parliament of National People's Power, Dr. Nalinda Jayathissa, also expressed his opinion regarding the debate today. We initially proposed the debate. I would like to say that after the National People's Power said that we are ready for the debate, the SJB and our party decided on a date for its initial discussion, which was the 10th of April. But two hours before that discussion, Nalin Bandara called me and informed that he is unable to participate due to other commitments. He proposed to hold this discussion after New Year's celebrations. The SJB on their end avoided the discussion. Now they are telling the media that we are attempting to avoid the debate. This is completely false. We would like to point out that we are ready to hold this debate with the SJB. We would like a date before the New Year. If the SJB leadership will not participate in it, we can then consider holding this debate with our economic committee and their representatives. 
ඔහුවේ වාදරේ නැත්නම් ඊළඟට අපිට සලකා බලන්න පුළුවන් අපේ ආර්ථික කමිටුව සහ ඔවුන්ගේ පැත්තෙන් ඉදිරිපත් කරන අයත් එක්ක විවාදය කරන ආකාරය පිළිබඳ හැබැයි wins the election Meanwhile, SLPP MP SM Chandrathan has said that the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramna will move forward by correcting its past mistakes, while the National People's Power and the Samagi Janabala Vegya are going back and forth about their debate. They are going back and forth verbally attacking each other, but they are not getting down to business. It seems like they are both afraid of each other. In the meantime, while these two are clashing, we are moving forward with our business. Our goal is to elect our presidential candidate. We recognize that our party lost control due to the previous president's shortcomings. We will correct that mistake by electing a president from our party and will continue our journey. <laughs> wins the election MP Kins Nelson said the Samagi Jana Balavega is ready for any election Api ape ape pakshe apeksika kawuda kene api rate janathawata kiyala thi We have informed the people of this country who our candidate is Today our leader who is also the leader of the opposition has said that every party has their own issues and that the Samagi Jana Balavega is the only party capable of confidently facing any upcoming election and driving the party towards victory We must also inform the government that we in the SJB are ready to face any election in the future be it the presidential election or the general election parliament mathivarneda me onama mathivarneyakata samage janna balave gi api sudana wins the election We know about the list of names of members of the Samagi Jana Balavega who will be breaking away and joining the United National Party. Therefore, we invite the members of the SJB to join us as your former leader is now the president of the country and we want leaders who can work. Rana Vikram Singh is a leader who can work and he is a talented leader. As backbench MPs, when we inform him of some work that should be done for the benefit of the general public, he has never turned us down. Therefore, we will protect the policies of our party and continue to provide our fullest support to Rana Vikram Singh. wins the election Opposition leader Sajid Premer Das says that the next Sinhala and Tamil New Year should be celebrated in a country that brings prosperity to all Today we are celebrating the Sinhala and Tamil New Year as a bankrupt nation half of our country is in poverty in a country like that The price of food to be laid out on the festive table has increased exponentially. It is a new normal where the consumption of fuel in the country has dropped drastically. It is a new normal where over 50% of the people in the country are poor. Can we celebrate the new year amidst such a new normal? Therefore, our ambition should be to celebrate the Sinhala and Tamil New Year in a country that brings prosperity to all and allows everyone to experience development the opposition leader made this statement while speaking at an event where a smart classroom worth 1 million rupees was donated to the tissa maharama veera villa panne gamua royal college news first with the people Eighty tons of vegetables has been discarded from the Dambulla Special Economic Centre between last night and this afternoon. The Traders Association at the Special Economic Centre said that such a large amount of vegetables had to be thrown away as large stocks of vegetables had been brought to the Dambulla Special Economic Centre during the past two days. The Dambulla Special Economic Centre was bustling during the past two days due to the festive season drawing near. Farmers had harvested a large portion of their crop and brought their produce to the Dambulla Special Economic Centre, while intermediary traders from across the country had also arrived at the centre to purchase their produce. Although there was an increase in the number of buyers for vegetables at the Dambulla Special Economic Centre, 
During the festive season, the Traders Association at the Dambula Special Economic Centre said that the Economic Centre had received stocks of vegetables that were several times the demand. Since we received very large stocks of vegetables during the past two days, a large amount of vegetables had also gone to waste. If vegetables that are brought to the economic centre cannot be sold by the third day, those vegetables have to be thrown away. A large amount of vegetable produce was sold at the economic centre. About 40 tonnes of vegetables would have been wasted. If the production of vegetables is higher than the demand of the country, the prices will drop. If the vegetable cooking melon starts selling at 150 rupees today, all the farmers will start growing cooking melon until the price drops to below 10 rupees. If cucumber starts selling at 200 rupees, all farmers start growing cucumber until cucumber cannot even be sold for 10 rupees. According to a survey conducted by the Institute of Post Harvest Technology, a large portion of the vegetable harvest in Sri Lanka goes to waste. Reports suggest that more than 40% of cucumber, over 30% of brinjal, 47% of cabbage and 66% of the carrot harvest in Sri Lanka goes to waste. While vegetables that were not sold at the Dumbula Special Economic Centre were thrown away, the Jathika Paribogika Peramuna says that the prices of vegetables in Colombo are increasing exponentially. A kilo of beans was sold at a price between 100 to 120 rupees. It is true that this is unfair to the farmers. We are of the view that there has to be some justice done to the farmers as well. But without any additional benefit accruing to the farmers, the price of a kilo of beans is 450 rupees today at the Paliagoda market. Who is getting the benefit of this 300 rupees that was increased suddenly? Is the benefit accruing to the farmer or the government who is earning here? Although three and a half years have passed, the Attorney General's department says that the police investigation reports regarding the sugar tax scam and garlic tax scam have not yet been submitted. The department says that due to this, they have not been able to take further action against the perpetrators of these scams. From the 14th of October 2020, the government took steps to reduce the special commodity levy of 50 rupees on one kilogram of sugar to a mere 25 cents with the aim of providing a concession to consumers. But later it was revealed that the consumers did not get the expected relief and since 14th of October 2020, the government has lost a tax revenue of 16,763 million rupees or 16.76 billion rupees in just four months. It was also revealed that Lanka Sotosa had suffered a loss of 102 million rupees by buying sugar at a higher price from private sector importers and selling it at a lower price to consumers. An audit into the matter revealed that during this period, the quantity of sugar imported by one specific sugar importer had increased drastically by a whopping 1,222%. In some international news, a court in Vietnam has sentenced a property tycoon to death over her role in a financial fraud case, the country's largest on record. Up next is our daily news update on the major developments from across the world. The World Today. We got Kenza Farouk and Sharon Benedict bringing us the details. Hello there, very good evening. Welcome to The World Today. Now, corruption, as you know, is not only an issue that plagues us here in Sri Lanka, but it plagues many other countries around the world. And some countries actually take the corrupt to book. Now, a court in Vietnam has sent sentence to death a Vietnamese tycoon for an embezzlement scandal Throw my lung, a Vietnamese business tycoon who is the chair of a Vietnamese conglomerate, has been sentenced to death for her involvement in bribery, embezzlement and violation of banking laws at the end of a court trial in Vietnam yesterday. Now, her lawyers now have 15 days to appeal the verdict. The value of her alleged asset appropriation was equivalent to about 3% of Vietnam's gross domestic product in 2022. And prosecutors said they seized more than 1,000 properties belonging to her. Len had denied charges leveled against her, instead blaming subordinates. 
Now, meanwhile, an update from the situation in the Israel-Gaza war. Now, the United States has advised its diplomatic staff in Israel to restrict their travel due to threats of an attack from Iran. Now, the U.S. has informed or instructed their diplomatic staff in Israel to prevent travel out of Jerusalem and the greater Tel Aviv area in an abundance of caution. Now, Iran has vowed to retaliate, blaming Israel for a strike on its consulate in Syria 11 days ago, killing 13 people. Meanwhile, UK Foreign Secretary Lord Cameron had, has phoned his Iranian counterpart to urge against further escalation. Now, what's important here, uh, Kenza, is that Israel has not claimed responsibility for the consulate attack, but is widely considered to have been behind it. According to a report, Iran backs Hamas, the armed Palestinian group fighting Israel in Gaza, as well as various proxy groups throughout the region, including some, such as Hezbollah in Lebanon, that frequently carry out strikes against the Israelis. Now, Shalin, those killed in the consulate attack included a senior commander of Iran's elite Quds force in Syria and Lebanon, as well as other military figures. Now, the attack came at a time of continuing diplomatic efforts to prevent the war in Gaza spreading across the region. Now, in more news involving the United States, U.S. President Joe Biden has been urged to ban the import of electric cars from China. Now, Chairman of the Senate Banking Committee, Senator Brown, wrote that the import of Chinese electric cars to the United States is an existential threat to the U.S. auto industry. Now, his comments are the strongest yet by any U.S. lawmaker on the issue, while others have called for state tariff uh, to keep Chinese electric vehicles out of the country. In February, the White House said the U.S. was opening an investigation into whether Chinese cars pose a national security risk. Senator Brown said in a video on social media platform X, formerly Twitter, quote-unquote, we cannot allow China to bring its government back cheating to the American auto industry. Now, Senator Brown, who is a Democrat from the car-producing state of Ohio, is also seeking a win in a fourth term in office in November's election. And that's a wrap of The World Today. And it's back to the studios again with Sandra and Mariam. Gold Plenty for life's every moment. Welcome back. You're watching Primetime News on TV One. Moving on with more local news. All immigration and emigration officers at all ports and airports launched a trade union action by wearing a black band around their arms and distributing leaflets. The trade union action that began at 9 a.m. today will continue until 9 a.m. tomorrow. The trade union action was launched citing several reasons including staffing issues at the Department of Immigration and Immigration, failure to fill several vacant positions at the department and changes to the working shifts. The trade union action was organized by the Sri Lanka Immigration and Immigration Officers Association. The trade union action was also staged at the Katunaika International Airport. The eight Sri Lankans rescued from the cyber slave camp in Myanmar will be sent home within the next week. The Sri Lankan embassy in Thailand announced that the eight Sri Lankans rescued from the cyber slave camp in Myanmar will be sent home within the next week. A senior embassy officer said the Sri Lankans are safely accommodated at a hotel in Bangkok. She also said the necessary paperwork for their return is being prepared. The embassy said that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Sri Lankan embassy in Thailand and the International Organization for Migration Country Officers in Sri Lanka and Thailand will extend their support for the process. The Sri Lankan embassy in Thailand added that the UN International Organization for Migration will provide flight tickets for the Sri Lankans. The Department of Immigration and Emigration said temporary passports were issued yesterday to facilitate the Sri Lanka's return to Sri Lanka. A few months ago, news was disclosed that 56 Sri Lankan youths were being held in an area controlled by an armed 
group along the Thai-Myanmar border and were forced to commit various cyber crimes. They were lured to Myanmar with promises of IT-related jobs. Following the discovery, eight of them were rescued and were held at the Central Police Station in Miawadi, Myanmar for investigation into their involvement in crime. Following investigations, they were sent to Thailand yesterday via the Thai-Myanmar Friendship Bridge. China and the Sri Lanka are joining forces to establish a new joint laboratory focused on sustainable tea cultivation. A Chinese research team recently visited Sri Lanka to discuss plans to establish a joint laboratory as part of the Belt and Road Initiative. Reports suggest that Sri Lanka, known for its traditional agriculture practices with tea cultivation as a key industry, aims to advance the popularization and application of green prevention and control technologies by building the laboratory in collaboration with China. The laboratory will focus its research on three key areas, which consist of accurate pesticide reduction based on big data, biological control technology for insect pests and weed infestations in tea gardens and risk monitoring and control technology aimed at tea pesticide residue. Through these efforts, the laboratory aims to set up an efficient, environmental friendly, safe and controllable system for green prevention and control in tea cultivation. The laboratory will be jointly established by the Guizhou University, the University of Peradeniya, the Central China Normal University and Sri Lanka Tea Research Institute. India's Bharatiya Janata Party has sent invites to political parties of 25 countries across the world, including Sri Lanka, to take the first-hand experience of BJP campaign and election management during the 2024 Lok Sabha elections. India's Bharatiya Janata Party has sent invites to political parties of 25 countries across the world to take the first-hand experience of BJP campaign and election management during the 2024 Lok Sabha elections. Foreign media reports that the invites have been sent to all the major democracies and neighboring countries. Political parties of around 15 countries have confirmed the participation. The confirmation list includes political parties from Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Tanzania, Mauritius, Uganda, among others. Notably, neither of the two major U.S. parties, the ruling Democrats, nor the opposition Republicans, has been invited. The party is planning a special three to four days briefing of the representatives of political parties from different countries. Thereafter, several batches consisting of four to five leaders would be traveling in the third and fourth phase of the election. The trip would be of three days where the leaders will attend rallies, meet with BJP booth workers, and see the functioning of the party. We're now crossing over to Joad Abdeen on the latest from the sporting arena. I think OJ got away with so much that he really actually thought he was a god, that he couldn't be touched. And like Nicole always told everybody, including myself, that whenever something happened, he will OJ his way out of it, and he did. Hello and welcome to another edition of the News First Sports Roundup. On this edition of the News First Sports Roundup, O.J. Simpson, the former American football star and actor who was controversially cleared of double murder, has died aged 76. San Francisco born. O.J. Simpson rose to fame in college before playing in the NFL. In 1995, he was acquitted of the murder of his former wife, Nicole Brown, and her friend in a trial that gripped America. In 2008, he was sentenced to 33 years imprisonment on unrelated charges of armed robbery. He was released in 2017. Diagnosed with prostate cancer, Simpson had been receiving chemotherapy treatment. The Pro Football Hall of Fame said, in a statement. According to his family, he died surrounded by his children and grandchildren. In 1994, he was arrested as a suspect in the murder of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown, and her friend, Ron Goldman. The pair were found stabbed to death outside Brown's home in Los Angeles, while Simpson became an immediate person of interest in the case. In one of the trial's most memorable moments, prosecutors asked Simpson, to put on a pair of blood-stained gloves allegedly found at the scene of the murder, but Simpson struggled to fit his hands into them. It led 
to one of Simpson's lawyers telling the jury in his closing arguments, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Remember these words, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Top Indian athlete Aishwarya Mishra's bronze medal at the 2023 Asian Championships will be upgraded to silver after original second place winner Farida Solieva of Uzbekistan failed a dope test. Farida's urine sample collected on the 13th of July during the Asian Athletics Championships in Bangkok last year contained prohibited substance meldonium and the Athletics Integrity Unit, the International Federation's body for combating doping, disqualified all her results from that date. Farida had finished second with a time of 52.95 seconds while Aishwarya was third in 53.07 seconds and Natisha Ramana Eko of Sri Lanka had won gold with a time of 52.61 seconds. And with that, we wrap up news for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Good night and take care.